It's halfway through second quarter and Olathe North is busier than ever. I'm Cole. That's right. We're almost halfway through the year and winter brings on more activities than ever. I'm Nick and we've got them all covered today on your Eagles Perch. Enrollment of new students doesn't just stop because we're almost halfway through the year. Officially, Olathe North is the second largest school in Kansas, but new students keep moving in. Amanda and Kayana have this story about moving to a new school. Transferring to a new school can be hard to leave your friends. How was your first day at a new school? I didn't say anything to anybody. Oh, okay, thanks. Ready? What is your name? Colin Denise. Were you nervous on the first day? Yes, I actually was. <laughs> Did anybody come up to you? Except for one. Except for one. Um, were you sad to leave your friends from middle school? I was very sad. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm Amanda, and this is Eagle Perch News. The Olathe North Chamber Orchestra performed with students from Pittsburgh State University and the Pittsburgh Intergenerational Choir for a spectacular performance at the Bicknell Center for the Performing Arts in Pittsburgh, Kansas City. Including, in this picture, are the current students and some recent ones from Olathe North. We're extremely proud of their musicianship, level of skill, and honor that they brought to our school. Believe it or not, it is time for our sophomore and junior students to begin thinking about enrollment for next year. Students in 10th and 11th grade have the opportunity to, to apply for one of our career and technical edu education programs such as Culinary Arts, CNA, ECCO, um, as well as Welding Technology, Automotive Technology, Auto Collision, and Construction Trades. Signups for the tours are in the counseling office with, Ms. with Mrs. Patty Stadler. In order to apply for a program, students must attend a tour. They will take place during the school day. Students and their families in grades 8 through 11 can find out more about the Olathe Advanced Technical Center at their open house on Thursday, November 19th from 5.30 to 7.30. OATC is located next to Olathe North at 611 North Nelson Road. So what do students do when they're not touring new programs or studying for tests? Video games, of course. There is a long history of teens and their games. Brady and Harrison continue to bring us insights to the virtual world in this report. So, uh, what is your name and what do you do here? Uh, my name is Garrett Stump. I'm a sales associate employee here at Game Cycle in Olathe, Kansas. My main job is to deal with uh, video game trade-ins, video game sales, do my best to, to give out expert advice, as expert as I can, advice on games, and to just generally help people find what they're looking for, whether it be a shooter, a sports game, a racer, an RPG, uh, or even if they just want some collectible stuff like posters or headsets or some statues or whatnot. Awesome. So, what is your favorite system? Uh, 1985 Nintendo Entertainment System or Famicom in Japan. It's just uh, it's a system that saved gaming in America or the West. Uh, it's really what made gaming the way it is. Without that, yeah, gaming would have still been a huge thing in Japan and the other Asian countries. But in America, if that one would have come out in the mid '80s, it probably would have died, and there'd be no Halo. There'd be no, you know, new Star Fox about to come out. There would be okay if there weren't any Skylanders, because that's kind of annoying. But there'd be nothing else without the NES. I love them all, but that one's my favorite. You know, new games. How does that reflect um, how styles of old games were made? Uh, at its core, at its core, every single video game ever. When you boil it down, it just comes to press press the button to do the thing, and the thing happens. Um, every genre ever, whether it be a platformer, an RPG, and a shooter, any kind of shooter, or unfortunately even dance games, all of those are just variations upon that same formula. When you look at the old school stuff and you see the evolution of how like a franchise or genre has changed, uh, there may be new things like graphics get better, controls hopefully get better. The storylines, you know, they actually started putting in storylines over time. Um, example, say like, oh, I don't know, the big one, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare last year or whatever. Uh, if you take a look at that, and if you take a look all the way back to like the earliest shooters on the Atari 2600 or whatever, those like just 2D shooter things, 
it's the same basic idea, but obviously they evolve. You know, they take that that core idea of let's shoot virtual pixels at things, and then they just update it. Um, what I hope happens when like young kids, uh, you know, when they're playing all the new stuff, but I hope that they want to discover the old stuff as well. And like, even if, even if they're still partial to the new stuff, um, I hope that they're able to enjoy and see where gaming came from. And I hope that more people become dedicated to wanting to preserve that. Cause we have so many people dedicated to preserving films or books or art. We need more people dedicated to preserving old games. And if we don't, they'll go away. And then there won't be any more four-year-olds playing Super Mario Brothers three or playing Asteroids on the twenty-six hundred anymore. <laughs> kind of a long answer, but yeah. What do you prefer, old games or new games? Okay, that one's a tough one. Um, I can't really say I prefer any of them because uh, I was born in ninety-three, so uh, I had two childhood consoles growing up. Um, from when I was born to when I was about till about two thousand two. My dad still raised me on his childhood NES. Uh, once that died, we traded all games in, and then we got the GameCube. So those are the two consoles I grew up on childhood. So for me, I have kind of an equal love for the old school retro stuff and the modern day stuff. When I became, four years ago, when I started hardcore collecting, now I've got 21 consoles, 546 games in my collection from throughout gaming's history. Um, I'm able to love all of them. It, Depending on which one I go and play, it just depends on what mood I'm in. If I want something, like if I want to experience an awesome story, I'll usually go for the more current stuff. If I want to just sit down and just have an old school platform or something more kind of mindless, I'll go with the classic route. But uh, I don't know. It, it just comes down to kind of what era you were born in or just what kind of gameplay you like more. All right. Thank you for your time. Mm, no problem. Thank you for coming in. It's time once again to nominate a male candidate for your sport or club for the 9th Annual Mr. Eagle Pageant. The event is scheduled to be held at 7 p.m. on Saturday, February 27, 2016 in North Auditorium. For those of you new to North, Mr. Eagle is a fundraiser for the, for the theater department. Ten clubs, activities, and sports will re be represented in the male beauty pageant. The pageant consists of six events, talent, club costume, beachwear, Former wear, former wear, and interview, and biggest fundraiser. Winners of each category will be awarded $20. The overall winner of Mr. Eagle will receive $100. The first runner-up receives $75, and the second runner-up receives $50. Every contestant will receive gifts and prizes. This is meant to be a fun time for everyone to enjoy and not to be taken too seriously. Come support the Eagle Ads at the fourth annual dance showcase hosted here at Olathe North. The ONE Love Movement of Saturday, November 14th. See any Eagleette for specific performance times. Come support local dance teams, dance studios, and your very own Eagleettes. There will be guest performances by the Johnson County Community, Johnson County Community College Golden Girls, a special needs dance class, and Westview Elementary School dancers. Admission is $4 for adults and $3 for students. We need your help to build this tradition at Olathe North and hope to see you there. Don't forget to wear your red. Eagle Service Club has participated in the Chick-fil-A Charity Challenge, and we need your help. All you have to do is eat at the Olathe Chick-fil-A throughout the month of November and mention Olathe North. We are competing against the other Olathe high schools to earn more money to donate to a charity of our choice. The school with the highest participation will get $1,000 towards the charity. Olathe North's Eagle Service Club has selected our money prize to be donated to the Johnson County Christmas Bureau because it benefits so many families in the area, including Olathe North families. The Olathe North Geoscience Program is partnering with Red Robin Gourmet Burgers to raise money. Help us raise as much money as possible by visiting the Olathe Red Robin anytime on November 12th. It's the easiest way to donate. All you have to do is enjoy over two dozen gourmet burgers and chicken sandwiches, all served with bottomless steak fries, salads, and wraps to Red Robin, and we'll donate 20%. There is one catch. Be sure to print off the, uh, and bring it in to make sure your meal is accounted for. <clears throat> Ow. Nick, what's wrong? I... I don't know, man. It's my brain. I think it's midterms or something. Oh, man. I, I, I don't know. The team brain may not be as much of a mystery as we thought. Nick and Justine share this. There are so many similarities between individual brains that it is easy to forget that your brain is quite different from that of the people around you. Teens, in general, experience life that we can't say about small children or the elderly. In other words, teens walk a different walk than the rest of the world. They, you, see things differently from the rest of us. You interpret things, facial expressions, sounds, anger, and even time in a way that is all but foreign to those who aren't teens. 
sleep differently, you make decisions differently, you act differently, you are different, and it is because you are a teenager. It also has a lot to do with your brain. When you are an infant, your brain was quite similar to the brains of other infants. It was an infant brain. Later, when you are grown up, your brain will for all intents and purposes be the same brain that you will find in other grown ups. It will be an adult brain. And still later, as an old man or woman, your brain will be an elderly brain. It will be remarkably similar to those of the elderly people. Many teens feel isolated for these reasons. They feel different from everyone around them, including their peers, their parents, and their teachers. It may seem like all people want to do is bother you. They won't leave you alone to do your own thing. Your teen brain stands out now because you are at the age when many things in life are coming together. You are old enough to understand the world, to make decisions on your own, and to be independent. When you were younger, your brain was different, and it didn't matter so much. After all, you still clung to the adults around you. Other people made decisions for you. You may have thought about independence in a vague way, but you were very much dependent. When that is exactly what you want at this point in your life. Your teen brain is different now in the same way that it was different when you were younger. And it will be different again when you are older. Only right now, at this strange but natural time of your life, the difference stands out like a tree in an open field. You are a teen, you wear teen shoes, you dress in teen clothes, and you do teen things. This is Nick and Justine for Eagles Perch. Stay unique, Eagles! I don't know if I just want to go start an alpaca farm with a very nice Spanish girl named Rosalita and have many, many beautiful mixed children, which I will name in alphabetical order Alfonso, um, Brian, Crystal, Dylan, Edgar, Franz, Garrett, Holly, because that will be the only girl, the only one. I'm Nick. And I'm Cole. And this has been Eagles Perch. Have a great day, Eagles. Bye.